video is going to be a little bit longer than I would prefer the rest of my videos to be because it's going to be on the anatomy of the skin. Black skin in particular, dark skin, skin with a lot of melanin in it. And melanin, skin with a lot of melanin in it. So, um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer to cover. I just want to cover the basis of the skin. Um, I'll go over a lot of things, but I may not go into each specific thing that I mentioned as in depth. I kind of just want to lay like a base of knowledge down so you kind of know like where I'm coming from with other videos if you don't like completely understand. Because the skin is an organ, it's it's working all the time and it works with everything else in our body. So you can't really um, just pinpoint one little tiny thing that you want to learn. You have to kind of understand the scope before you can get to that one thing because everything works together. Okay. The skin is the largest organ in the body. The skin has six major functions. Um, it protects us, it excretes. Our skin also absorbs when you go, like if you have like a, to a reaction on your skin, that's because um, your skin absorbed whatever toxic thing it was. So you wanna keep your skin nice and healthy um, to protect you as a barrier. Um, I said your skin protects, did I say your skin protects? Your skin also protects you. It protects you from toxins, it protects you from injury, it protects you from UV rays, which is a super important one, and it protects you from bacteria, which is probably even more important than UV rays, especially when you're talking about melanated skin, because we are already protected from the sun. I'll get into that later. In terms of excreting, the skin is part of the one of the body systems that gets rid of wastes toxins from your liver, from your intestines, from your gut, um, carbon dioxide when you inhale, all that stuff. So be very mindful of that. what you're putting into your body is also what's going to be coming out. You're going to see it on your skin. When we talk eczema, when we talk acne, all of those skin issues start from the inside first. Drink lots of water. Help your skin flush out the toxins because it's not just your kidneys and it's not just your bowels that are doing the ex ex excreting. Why is that word so hard? Ex ex excreting, whatever. Removing toxins. Um, your skin is also going to be doing that too. Another function of the skin is secretion. Different from excretion. Excretion is the removal of waste. Secretion is oil. Um, your skin secretes sebum, um, which is the natural oils that are in the body. Those natural oils kind of give us like a film on our skin. Film is such a nasty word. But that's like the best way to describe it. It creates like a, actually creates what we call an acid mantle. Um, the acid mantle is, like I said, a little film on your skin um, that helps protect us. The pH of the acid mantle on your skin is 4.5 to 5.5. That's the healthy range that your skin needs to be in. At that range, your skin has a very great um, barrier for bacteria to enter it um, through your pores so you don't get acne, um, so you don't get like any rashes or any infections or anything like that. 4.5 to 5.5 is on the acidic range. Acid mantle. Um, but your body is actually alkaline. The um, acidity of the body is a little bit above 7. Is 7 would be neutral as water. Um, so the alkaline interior of your body and the acidic exterior of your body creates like this barrier where um, bacteria can't get in. Yeah, side note, things like sugar, uh, sodas, uh, bread, pasta, high sodium diets, um, high processed food, not drinking enough water, changes the pH of your the interior of your body. Um, your body should be alkaline, all those things make it acidic. So if the interior of your body is acidic, that's the best place for disease to live. When you see like alkaline water, alkaline foods, that's to create an environment in the body that promotes health, that is uh, resistant to infection and resistant to disease. Another thing your skin does is it regulates body temperature with sweating, obviously, or goosebumps, and it provides you with your sense of touch. Pressure, pain, um, pleasure, temperature. So your skin is really important. You have to keep it healthy for all of these things to continue functioning. For a long time, scientists thought that the skin was kind of like inert, like it didn't changing, it wasn't moving all the time, but that is not true. You get a whole new fresh 
batch of skin every 28 days. And that's called cell turnover. How quickly your cells turn over, how quickly they multiply, and how quickly they shed. Things like vitamin A are going to help um, promote cell turnover. You see vitamin A in a lot of scarring products and you see it in um, a lot of anti-aging products because as you age, your skin slows down um, that cell turnover. Luckily for us brown people, cell turnover is quicker. For brown people, I'd say maybe 25 days. Um, obviously, that's just a little guesstimate. Um, there is not as much research as I wish that there was on brown skin, um, but that's what it generally shows. As you age, your cell turnover will slow down to as slow as 35 days, um, which is why you'll see older skin look really dull and gray. The, old, the cells are just old and they're not renewing. Now back to cell growth, your cells grow from like the inside out. There are three layers to the skin. Um, the very, very interior layer is called the subcutaneous layer. It's basically just fat. It pads your body. It basically just gives your face um, your body its shape. The next one out is the dermis. So the dermis is one layer out from the subcutaneous layer. And the dermis is where your skin obtains all its nutrients from. Um, that's where the blood vessels are. That's where capillaries are. That's also where um, elastin and collagen are. Outside of the dermis is the epidermis, which is a part of the skin that we can see. Um, estheticians only deal with the epidermis in terms of exfoliation, peels, treatments, all that stuff is only going to affect the epidermis. If I were a nurse, I could do peels that would affect the dermis, or maybe only doctors could do that. Regardless, the dermis is the meat of your skin. They consider it the true skin, so you don't want to the epidermis grows from the inside out, of course, so it's getting all the nutrients from the dermis because of all your blood cells, and then it's growing outward um, up to the very surface layer. The very surface, surface layer of your skin, the part that you can see, is the stratum corneum, is what it's called, stratum corneum. Um, the stratum corneum is about 10 cells deep, so it's not that deep at all, and it's the part that sheds. Um, they're made of keratinocytes, so it's really flat flaky skin um, when you when you're ashy hold on I'm always I'm always ashy it's a secret when you're ashy you see all that scratching I'm scratching off my um, stratum corneum sorry that might have been gross I am known for being side note in high school everyone used to call me ashy everyone because I was always ashy so like this glowed up person that you see now I worked so hard to be like moisturized because like New York winters, man, Jamaican girls are not meant to be in New York. I don't even understand why my parents chose New York. That's why I dipped to California because I can't do that. Like, anyway, <laughs> it's very important that we um, exfoliate that stratum corneum. Exfoliating also helps promote cell turnover. Um, it's very important that we hydrate the stratum corneum because the stratum corneum, um, when it gets dull, when it gets flaky like my ash, um, that's when you get gray. And you're not going to get that healthy, pretty glow that everybody wants. That's why everyone drenches themselves in highlighter nowadays because um, healthy skin is glowy skin. Your stratum corneum is exfoliating. Your acid mantle is healthy and your oil levels are healthy. Um, that's that natural glow. Like little babies have that pretty glow. Basically everyone before puberty and your hormones start getting crazy has that really pretty glow. Now we talk about everybody's favorite thing, melanin. Um, melanin is a protein. Um, melanin is a protein that exists in cells called melanocytes. Melanocytes exist in the layer of the epidermis that all of your other skin grows out from, which is why your whole body, for the most part, your skin is one color because all the new cells that grow have melanin created by the melanocytes in them. Melanin only exists in the epidermis because when you get to the dermis, that's where your collagen is, that's when your elastin is. Um, melanin as a protein absorbs UV rays. So it's almost like a SPF. I'm going to link um, a video down below. Um, it's actually one of my favorite videos. It makes me really emotional because everything makes me emotional. This video is called How the Sun Sees You. I don't want to ruin the video. You'll understand what I'm saying once you see the way that melanin protects us 
from the sun. UV rays are very damaging to collagen and elastin. They wear, they just wear them out. It's like a, a rubber band that gets pulled, like your hair ties when you try and do a pineapple and it just gets worn too tight and they just get raggedy. That's what happens to the elastin. Elastins are like rubber bands. Collagen are more like pillows. So again, it just wears it down. It makes you, give you like a really dead flat pillow. This is why black doesn't crack. But this is why black people, brown people, seem to age slower because the melanin in our skin protects us, protects the collagen in the dermis, protects the elastin in the dermis from wearing down and getting all raggedy. This is not to say that black people shouldn't wear SPF. Here's my little thing on that. For a long time I was very anti-SPF because in my head I'm like, well I'm brown. This is literally the point of me being brown is that I'm protected from the sun. As you can see on this little, pretty little map here, that in terms of evolution, your skin has adapted itself to your native region. Areas closest to the equator have the most brown people. Areas furthest away from the equator, um, your skin lightens out because you don't need as much protection from the sun in, in say, Norway as you do in India or as you do in Africa, obviously. Sunscreen mimics the effects of melanin in the skin. Quick little fun fact, it's actually not so fun, um, depends on who you are, but uh, <laughs> if you look at Australia, Australia is all brown. The native inhabitants of Australians are very, very dark people. The Aborigines are super, super dark skinned people, even darker than me most of the time. The people who now live in Australia are very fair. Australia has the highest rate of skin cancer in the world for this reason. And it's just so funny, right? Because as I'm doing my research, as I always do, they called it globalization. And in my head, I was like, what you really mean is colonization and imperialization, which is the reason why all these white Australians have skin cancer. I'm sorry for this little woke break. But if you know anything about how Australians treat the native people of Australia, the Aborigines, you wouldn't feel so bad about their skin cancer. I don't wish cancer on anyone. I hope they wear lots of sunscreen. Their estheticians probably get paid real well. Dermatologists probably balling out the gym. But yeah, that was my little tiny woke break. That was kind of unnecessary, but I just had to say it. Yeah, quick shout out to Colin Kaepernick for being the shit. Yes, black people can get skin cancer. Um, it's very rare that a black person develops a skin cancer caused by UV rays. You should still wear sunscreen because of scarring. It helps prevent scarring. I'll tell you why in a second. But you should still wear sunscreen. Again, if, if you were at risk for skin cancer, um, Africa would have really high rates of skin cancer. Jamaica would have really high rates of skin cancer. The skin cancer that dark skinned people do tend to get is a very rare form of skin cancer. Bob Marley actually had this exact same form of skin cancer. I cannot pronounce it, but it's on the screen for you to pronounce for yourself. <laughs> Usually goes undiagnosed, so that makes it very deadly. Um, it's also pretty rare, so that makes it even more deadly. Skin cancer spreads super quickly. Like I said, skin is an organ that's living and breathing and changing all the time. That means those infected um, cancer cells can spread throughout the body like nothing. In terms of Bob Marley, he developed um, the cancerous cells on his toe. He's not with us anymore, so it's not to say that black people can't get skin cancer. That is not true. But you also don't have to lather yourself up with sunscreen all the time like freckled people do to protect yourself. Now in the same way that melanin absorbs UV rays to protect us from them, melanin likes to protect us from lots of things, hence scarring. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melasma, which is hormonal pigmentation. When your skin um, gets inflamed, your body kind of freaks out. It's like, oh shit, something's going on right here. That's why it gets red. When it's infected, that's all the blood cells and everything, all your nutrients rushing to that area because your skin is like, yo, listen, some shit's going on right here. We got to take care of it. Melanin reacts when there's an injury. Melasma is a hormonal pigmentation issue that happens with pregnant women happens when you're on birth control sometimes um, you'll see people get it like on their forehead um, I think uh, Drea 
got it on her neck. Your body's trying to protect you. Melanin um, thickens the skin. Melanin makes the skin stronger. And that's what your skin thinks it needs when something's happening. So because of that injury response that melanin has, um, black skin, darker skin, I don't want to say black skin, because all non-white skin tends to scar pretty easily. Of course, it's not an absolute. There are some black people who don't scar very dramatically at all. On average, the more melanin you have, the more prone to scarring you will be. Melanin reacts to injury. I will do a whole video um, specifically for hyperpigmentation. I said I don't like my videos long. That one's probably going to be a long video because hyperpigmentation is such a huge issue for darker skin people. Melanated skin, darker skin also tends to have um, tighter bands of elastin and thicker bands of collagen. The combination of those two one keeps you looking young, but it also makes you more prone to raised scarring, um, hypertrophic scarring, and keloid scarring. Um, hypertrophic scarring mean is not as bad as keloid scarring. Keloid scarring is like the large overgrowth, almost looks like um, like a tumorous kind of overgrowth. Bands of collagen, when your skin tries to repair itself, lay down very, very thick just keep laying down and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Your skin is overhealing. Same with hypertrophic scarring. Um, it's just not as severe. You'll get the thick banding. The skin will often be raised or shiny. But that's because of the increased collagen in your skin. That's the reason why that happened. Whew. Okay, I'm all done. Let's glow together. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if there's anything that you wanted me to cover more deeply, anything that you want me to make um, a more uh, specific video about. I said I'm going to do a video on hyperpigmentation. Um, of course I'll do a video um, on acne and all that stuff. That's, that's basic stuff. But if there's something specific um, to you that you want to know, let me know so I can help you so we can glow together. Please subscribe to my channel. Share it with all of your favorite people. Thank you so much for watching this long ass video. I promise all my other videos won't be this long. Um, I appreciate you so much. Love yourself more than you love anything else in the world. And always remember that if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. Mwah.